Hi everybody, this is Fox Nomad, and today I want to help you travel smarter by talking about Huawei, the Huawei ban, and what the security risks might be of Huawei equipment in general. Now you've probably seen a lot of news about the Huawei ban, theories as to why the ban has gone into effect, and there are a couple of good explainers as to what's happening to Huawei. I'm going to link to all of those in the comments below so you can check out those articles and those videos, but I haven't seen a lot of analysis on the technical aspects of Huawei what kinds of security risks might actually be at play. So I thought I'd brush off my computer security expertise and take a look at Huawei, what the security risks could be. So this is everything you need to know about Huawei and whether or not it's a security risk. Now this whole Huawei situation is very complex, but essentially what's happened right now is US companies are not allowed to do business with Huawei. So what that's meant is various chip manufacturers can't put their chips into Huawei laptops. Google's had to pull the Play Store and Play Services off of Huawei phones. And if you're not very familiar with Huawei, this is a huge deal because Huawei is the number two phone manufacturer in the world. So they're a huge multi-billion dollar company. So getting removed from the Play Store is a huge hit to their business. They're also pulling a lot of their laptop line that they were gonna launch in the US. And some of them have come back now. So Microsoft has started selling some Huawei laptops again. I don't know how specifically they've gotten around the ban. The details are not very clear there. But basically all of these economic implications, the ban, all of it centers around security and whether or not Huawei is a security risk, in particular in regards to 5G networks. So basically you use 4G and 5G is on the way and Huawei is one of the main manufacturers of 5G technology. A lot of countries in Europe and around the world had signed agreements with Huawei to introduce their 5G equipment to set up 5G networks in those countries but since then a lot of security concerns have been raised but what are those actual security concerns and technically how feasible are they so let's start off by talking about technical vulnerabilities so all hardware and software is going to have technical vulnerabilities at some point during its life cycle usually the way those are discovered are in two ways one of those is that they are discovered either internally at the company while the product is being created or during an update during testing or later Later on by security researchers implementing that technology or by independent security researchers who traditionally will get in touch with a company, let them know about any vulnerability that they've discovered, give them a certain time frame to fix that, it's usually 30 days, and then they will publicly disclose that vulnerability with the idea to protect people who might be vulnerable to that vulnerability using that software and to kind of push a company along to patch that vulnerability. So those are unintentional vulnerabilities. Those are mistakes in the code. Those are sloppy coding those are mistakes that can occur for all sorts of reasons but they're not intentionally put there but the second type of security concern especially with regards to Huawei are intentional security vulnerabilities that can be put into equipment that could later be used by the Chinese government who has strong ties to all Chinese companies so they would force or maybe imply or maybe use Huawei to implement some sort of malicious code that they could activate on a 5G network whenever they wanted whenever they wanted to eavesdrop or in the case of a conflict conflict and so on. So that's the second scenario. But let me talk about the first case scenario. So a lot of companies, especially ones that grow very rapidly, generally have a poor security record in the beginning. And it takes them some time to catch up when it comes to security. The reason is because most companies that make software and hardware don't have security in mind. So a company that's making a phone is not primarily concerned with the security vulnerabilities that might exist in the hardware or using third party manufacturers, which Huawei has had problems with in the past because they've not quite vetted their third-party vendors very well and that's a process that most companies generally mature into because it's a costly process to vet all of your vendors and it's an expensive one that can cost you business so in the beginning companies are generally very lax they don't very much have security in mind and when they want to work with a third-party vendor let's say they need a particular chip or a particular piece of hardware they're less likely to turn down business because they need that business to come up with their product they don't have the clout of a larger company to say no you guys need to get this security x y and z in order before we buy your product being the little guy and huawei is clearly not the little guy at this point but for smaller companies that's generally the position that they're in and you've definitely seen this as a trend in huawei so in 2010 the uk government found shortcomings in huawei's engineering processes which they say expose new risks into uk telecommunication networks and long-term challenges in mitigation and management specifically 
concluded that not all components from third parties that go into Huawei products are vetted in the same way. In particular, security critical third party software used in a variety of products was not subject to sufficient control, the report says. It also added that the National Cybersecurity Center, HCSEC, and Huawei's research and development teams were discussing ways to tackle the concerns. And what that says to me is basically in their project management life cycle they didn't really have security in mind and also on top of that they weren't vetting these vendors which like i said when you're a rapidly growing company they're not going to turn down potential business because they have a set of their own security requirements so unless some sort of outside entity or an audit comes along where they have to comply to certain regulations they're not very likely to follow certain security protocol which is common in larger more established companies now again this is not particularly to Huawei. I'm not saying that's the case here, but it is common for a company to not put security in mind until third parties begin to express concerns, business concerns, or they have to meet regulatory requirements. So when it comes to unintentional flaws or vulnerabilities, that's obviously a huge concern if you're setting up a 5G network. And let's say the random number generator used for encrypting certain communications is faulty and somebody finds that vulnerability, then they could, let's say, decipher some communications that are going across the network. And that vulnerability might not be discovered for a very long time. And it might be used by malicious actors to do all sorts of stuff. So that's the first concern is the stuff that's coming out of Huawei, whether or not that's been thoroughly security vetted. Now, obviously, companies and governments that buy any technology have to do their own security vetting of a product. But when the supply chain like this is not as thoroughly checked, then there are going to be more concerns. Now, the second security concern is intentionally leaving a piece of malware or some sort of flaw or some sort of backdoor in a piece of hardware or software that can later be exploited. And when it comes to Huawei, because they have such close ties to the Chinese government, then there's a huge concern that a potential vulnerability that's placed in a piece of hardware or software could be exploited by the Chinese government to be used for eavesdropping or network hacking or all sorts of things. So this would be a vulnerability that's intentionally left in a piece of hardware or software on a 5G network, for example. Now, what makes that more difficult technically is first, the Chinese government uses Huawei equipment as well. So they would have to be sure that that backdoor is not being used against them on their networks. The second thing is when you mass manufacture some sort of backdoor like this, security researchers at all levels, the independent researchers, researchers at various companies, and the actual researchers and technicians at the companies who are purchasing this equipment are going to try to vet that software and hardware as best they can for security flaws and vulnerabilities. And if it was ever discovered or proved that one of Huawei's vulnerabilities was placed there intentionally by the Chinese government, for example, or by Huawei themselves, it would pretty much shut down their business altogether. Nobody would ever do business with them because this hack was found intentionally placed on all of this equipment. And a company that's sloppy about implementing security controls in general is probably not going to do the best job at implementing an intentional vulnerability, hiding that vulnerability and also hiding the fact that it was intentionally placed there. In other words, that quality control tends to go both ways. So if you're a company that has good, strong security controls in place, then that means your development staff probably has a good idea of how to implement security controls. Companies that don't have a good security infrastructure in place, they don't have a good security minded development staff in place already, are probably not going to do the best job of implementing a vulnerability intentionally. And if they do, it's going to be very obvious and getting caught with an intentional vulnerability would likely end Huawei's business, at least in terms of the US, Europe, and many other countries around the world. So it would be a huge business risk for them. And whether or not Huawei is willing and able to take such a risk is what a lot of this ban debate is centered around. So what does all of this mean? The first thing is that there are clearly some issues that have been found in Huawei's procedures in their security procedures. Some of these reports have noted that their security process is sloppy. So what that says to me is they're pushing out products and updates very quickly without necessarily going through all the vetting that you would want to go through on code to make sure that it meets security compliance, that you're testing it against all kinds of data. You've got a bunch of testers that are trying to break your code. You want to make sure that it's as secure as possible. And when it's on critical infrastructure like networking equipment, you especially want to make sure that that equipment is thoroughly vetted because you don't want this massive gap in your networking equipment 
and expose all of your customers to all sorts of vulnerabilities. Now, why wouldn't a company do this from the get go? Like I said, if they're already making business, if, if it's not hurting their business, if they're trying to grow very rapidly, if they just want to push out software updates as fast as they can to beat their competitors, then they're very likely to skip all of these security concerns unless there are regulatory requirements on them to meet certain standards. And I will add in a lot of these reports, they mention unnamed officials from the intelligence communities around the world. We don't know what the intelligence communities have discovered, for example, what the governments know, but we know that it is possible because they are making networking equipment. It's possible for any company making networking equipment to introduce flaws intentionally into their networking equipment. And on the flip side, because Huawei has had a lot of security issues in the past, chances are that their equipment is going to have more flaws than usual, more flaws than is expected for a company of that size, because they're not going through all the security requirements perhaps that a company that's more mature or a company that's in a more regulated environment would have to go through. So on the one hand, you've got a company that has a history of putting out products with a lot of security vulnerabilities, either due to sloppiness or negligence. And on the other hand, you've got a company that is in a position to place a piece of vulnerable software in a lot of very important and critical equipment. So there you have it, a lot of the security issues that have been raised that have been made public are mostly political at this point. There are certain concerns from Huawei's past, but if you look at a lot of big companies' past, then you would find certainly similar sort of sloppiness in their security processes leading up to somebody saying, hey, you're not doing security right or you're not looking at security thoroughly enough and it's beginning to impact business for us. So we don't want to do business with you until you get your security infrastructure better in place. You have more routine processes to check all of your stuff so that by the time that you release a product, we know or we have a good amount of confidence that it's been thoroughly checked before we check it as well. So I hope this has been somewhat helpful to you. I've tried to break down this complex topic and let you know what Huawei could do technically. Like I said, there's not a lot of evidence that they have actually done anything through malicious intent. There have clearly been vulnerabilities in the past that have gotten there through sloppiness. But in terms of those security vulnerabilities, that can be fixed through a thorough security assessment meeting certain regulations and requirements and following certain protocols and established guidelines. As far as placing malicious code intentionally, that is a whole other issue and that is one that's more on the political side. I'll link to a lot of resources down there in the comments below so you can check out those and learn a little bit more about that side of things. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and while you're down there, hit the like and subscribe buttons, check out the merch and I will see you in the next video.